Hello, Stephen Kuhn here, author of Unleash Your Humble Alpha and Business Advisor. Catch me on The Jesse T Show. Brother, brother, Stephen, what's going on, man? Up, my man. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Man, it's uh, it's been beautiful just journeying and talking and doing life together, man. And so, uh, you know, we've had you on before. So, yep. you know, re- repeat guest, and I'm sure you'll be on multiple times in the future. So... <laughs> What's going on in your world, dude? Well, you know, I mean, we we were just in Mexico what about a month and a half ago. Yep. It seems it seems like a a world ago. It does. You know, like a universe ago. Because I think that after we worked with Bufo, that whole that integration phase, that period after that was it was without words. Yep. It was it was uh so incredible. I mean, I had situations where I couldn't I couldn't fathom the information that I was downloading or the things that happened to me, you know. And so trying to integrate that into your normal light, normal, which I don't think we are (laughs) (laughs) anymore, (laughs) you know, trying to integrate that into your normal life uh, uh, while embracing um, that, that new act, I want to say access that we have to the universal hard drive. I almost like to say, you know, universal. We can say it. It's true. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) It's, and, and, and it's, it's a, it's, I mean, that's what I saw, right. When I went, when I was on, when I was working with Bufo is I saw, like this hard drive where I went inside and it was like a library of all the universal knowledge, but knowing that yeah. you can't download it all at once and you can't know it. Um, the integration part was me piecemealing things that were important for me at this time and, you know, allowing myself access to that and trying to work with it. And I got to tell you, you know, life um, after that, it's sort of nothing really gets to you, you know, yeah. a- almost to the point where you're like, what? maybe my goals aren't what they used to be. Maybe I'll just like relax a little bit. So it's yeah. like, almost like a trick, <laughs> almost like a trick, right? Like we were yeah. talking about that before the show, like, wait a second. <laughs> I've felt the same way, man. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting playing with, you know, the new, the new reality, the new paradigm, because yeah. it's, you don't want to get to a point where you're so like, quote unquote, Zen that you're not doing anything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, well, just- <laughs> let's face it. There's a lot of people like that. You know, they're, I mean, I, I, I know a guy, he's the most centered guy I know. And he lives on a mattress in a, in a, in someone's room in Spain yeah. uh, for free because he can't afford a place to stay, but he's super Zen, you know? And um, that's, that's what Lane and I, we always talk about that bridging the gap, right. Between the spiritual and the reality as a, as a perceived reality and how, how do we bring those together to have one paradigm? And it's just sort of, um, it's the cool thing about it is it's always a challenge, right? So you're always moving forward. You're always discovering the more you learn, the less, you know, and the more le- less, you know, the more you want to learn. So it's like yep. this endless cycle, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully until, you know, we uh, discover how to have it all right. Yeah. You know, and then, yeah. and then yeah. go between both worlds or whatever. Um, and so that, that's, that's a cool challenge. And just knowing that there is no end point is I take solace in that because like, wow, this is a learning experience my whole life. And I can't wait. Every day I wake up hung, hung, hungry for that. And it's the small, little, subtle things, right? I mean, you're like, oh, wow, that, that doesn't even bother me anymore. Like you're sitting there and you're like, the things that used to bother me don't even, they don't even come up anymore. Yep. You know, it's just, yep. and it's, I think, it, I think, I think working with, you know, we, I, you know, I worked with Ayahuasca and San Pedro for, well, Ayahuasca for 16 years, San Pedro for five years, combo and stuff. And nothing prepared me for combo. I mean, it wasn't even close. Um, so intense 20 minutes and 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 that harmonica music i heard at the beginning is still a trigger for me i literally it, just got to put it on and it's like it's so funny so um i have it's it's interesting I have ez who who is a uh, amazing leader shaman great guy um that that led our journeys for us and he's going to be on the podcast today at 1 p.m eastern oh awesome yeah so it's like this really cool kind of going back to the moment mm-hmm. thing but that harmonica man I'll t- I'm getting like really like uh, emotional thinking about it right now because there was one point where I was first coming out of that that psychedelic bufo heavy bufo DMT state where I thought I was done and I kind of went back in a couple times um, but when I when I came out he was looking at me finishing the last note of his harmonica and then like did this beautiful thing where you like looked up to the ceiling and like finished the last note. And I looked at him and I was like, Oh, like, like he, he completely stewarded that whole journey. Like he was in there with us. And like that, that harmonica, it's giving me chills right now. That harmonica 
is so powerful. And like, he just played a beautiful love song for us. And, and it's so strange because it's such a trigger. Lane sent a video of him playing the harmonica. And I, I cause I couldn't remember what that feeling or what I heard in the first few seconds. Yes. I couldn't remember. And then Lane's like, look, I bought a harmonica. I'm like, Oh my God. And he sent, sent a video of playing it. And I, I got this full body sort of reaction to it where I was set back into that stance again, where I was, you know, being elevated. I was like, Oh my God, that was it. It was the exact, what he played was like the exact thing that I heard. No. It was incredible. It's beautiful. He's doing that and seeing him and do then, that, and like getting really proficient with it. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. So it, it really, it really, uh, uh, you know, at night, sometimes when I go to bed, I'll play the video just to get me into that state. And then I'll consciously go where no man has gone before. No, I'll just consciously what go, a, you know, what a journey though. Just the, I yeah. mean, that whole trip was magic, man. And the, just the, the moments from being on the beach and, and being in communion with each other and talking about life and business and relationships yeah. and love and just the, the world. And, and then all the intermediary stuff where we, you know, we had these adventures and then kind of this pinnacle moment with Bufo. And then we even, you know, traveled further into Chichen Itza and did some beautiful stuff there. I mean, what, I mean, that was one of my favorite experiences in 39 years of life. It was the best, best experience I've ever had in my life. I think because I was there with trusted friends where I could let go and with my family, including my children. Perfect. Yeah. I think that made a big difference for me, but I got to tell, I got to tell, I already told you this, but you know, my wife isn't into this and nor is Ross's wife or, you know, and so, you know, for her to go along and put up with it <laughs> pretty much <laughs> was, was pretty powerful, but it was, it was the state that we were in altered their states. Yes. And, and the one experience I want to tell you is when, you know, I was taking pictures of my wife and she's like, you're always taking pictures. And you said to her, well, you're very photo, you know, photo worthy.